Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Smoke Learning Channel. In this video, we're going to look at some of the updates to ConnectFX in Smoke 2016. This includes various tools and functionality to help improve your ConnectFX experience. These improvements are not footage specific, so you can use your own flow graphs to follow along. So starting off in a sequence, I already have a ConnectFX segment where I've composited multiple elements together. The first update I'd like to point out is the CFX segments name. This comes from the segment you applied the ConnectFX, or the bottommost segment of a layered selection. In this case, the segment is named LS underscore SH underscore 10A. So why do you need to know this? Well, when you enter ConnectFX, you will notice that the ConnectFX name is based on the segment's name. It is also represented in the CFX output node at the end of the flow graph. If you change the name of the ConnectFX in the media panel, for example, I'll rename it to My Comp, only the ConnectFX name will change. However, the CFX output node as well as the segment name will remain the same. Press Command Z to undo the name change. Now if I change the name of the CFX output node, for example I'll rename it to Final Comp, the ConnectFX name will change. If I exit back to the sequence, the CFX segments name has also updated to Final Comp. So the naming of the CFX segment and ConnectFX are directly linked to the naming of the CFX output node. So you don't need to be out of ConnectFX in order to update the naming in the sequence. Now go back into ConnectFX. The next update is Node Indicators. Certain nodes now present more information in the flow graph to help you know what they're doing. For example, look at the COMP node before the CFX output node. It is currently set to BLEND. But you can double click on the COMP node and change its blending mode. For example, I'll change the blending mode to AVERAGE. Looking back at the COMP node, AVERAGE is now reflected in the node indicator. The node indicators have been implemented in certain nodes where it was necessary. For example, I'll hold Control command and pan my schematic. So the Mono node, Mux node, Clamp node, Comp node and Color frame node all use node indicators. Hopefully you won't have to venture into these nodes just to see what's been applied. Panning the schematic slightly over again, there is another small improvement with regards to resolutions and nodes. So here is my logo at an unusual resolution. And I would like a colour frame node to have the same resolution. In the previous versions of Smoke, you would have to double click on the colour frame node and manually enter in the resolution. In Smoke 2016, you select the colour frame node. Hold the T keyboard shortcut and click on the source node. All the media's resolution settings will be copied to the node. This applies to the Colour Frame node, Gradient node, Resize node, Text node and Matchbox nodes. Now let's return back to the main flow graph. Another new update to the ConnectFX schematic occurs at the media level. Taking a closer look at the connection coming out of the media nodes, you will notice some new symbols. These are called adapters. Now the ConnectFX environment exclusively supports 8-bit and 16-bit material. Typical ProRes material is 10-bit or even 12-bit. So in previous versions of Smoke, you would manually set the material to be resized to 16-bit with a resize tool. In Smoke 2016, the adapters indicate that the footage is automatically converted to 16-bit in order to work in all the ConnectFX nodes. This will save you a lot of time manually changing bit depths just to work in ConnectFX. 
Just to reiterate, the adapters change the colour bit depth of the image and not the physical resolution. Now the final update in ConnectFX will help you keep your flow graph tidy as well as better navigate them. To set a context, look at my flow graph and you will notice how the straight connections overlap the nodes. As more nodes and connections are added into the flow graph, it can become quite messy and difficult to visually navigate. So to help with this scenario, breakpoints have been implemented into the ConnectFX flow graph. To create a breakpoint, you need to switch the Tools menu to Add Points or press the Shift A keyboard shortcut. Now click and drag on the connection to make a breakpoint. So breakpoints can be used to neatly organise connections to keep the flow graph ordered. To carry on working on the nodes, you need to switch back to Select mode. You can use the Tools menu or press the Shift M keyboard shortcut. Now this is a great improvement, but I can already tell that you're thinking about the pain of switching modes to do simple tasks and go back again. So to make the operations easier, tools can now be temporarily enabled to work faster. For example, I am in Select mode and I want to add a breakpoint very quickly. To temporarily enable Add Points, press and hold Shift A. Do not release the keyboard shortcut. Click and add a breakpoint into the connection. When you release the cursor and keyboard shortcut, the tools automatically revert back to Select mode. So if you tap the keyboard shortcut, the mode switches permanently. However, if you press and hold the keyboard shortcut, it will temporarily switch until you release the keys and it reverts back to the previous mode. This applies to all tool modes in ConnectFX. For example, I want to delete a breakpoint. I hold Shift D and click on the breakpoint. The breakpoint deletes and when I release the keys, the mode switches back to Select mode. As a final tip to conclude this video, the temporary mode switch also works in action. Go ahead and give it a try. This concludes the ConnectFX updates in Smoke 2016. I hope that they are useful and speed up your workflows. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Smoke Learning channel for future videos.